So hi again everybody, it is Friday the 16th of July 2021 and it's time for another episode of Johnny Chips Weekly, so let's jump on into episode number 29. So, yes, hello again, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. It's a Friday lunchtime, so it's time for another episode of Johnny Chips Weekly. Hope you've all had a great week. Uh, this week's title is Inspire. Uh, you know, evidently we've had uh, Microsoft Inspire, the partner conference, uh, kicking off this week uh, with some amazing uh, updates and news coming out from that. So we'll delve into that in a little bit, a uh, little bit of time. Today, we're going to just jump in to the usual format. So we'll have a little bit around community call out where uh, I let you guys know a little bit about the things that have caught my eye over the last week in the, the world of cloud. And then we'll jump into looking at what some of these announcements are from Inspire this week uh, and some other bits and pieces. So without further ado, let's just get straight to it. Okay, so yeah, first uh, community call out today is it's still July, therefore it is still July OT is running along with us uh, this week again. So it's week three and this week it's dedicated to all things microcontrollers and embedded hardware. So it's really that makers week at the moment. As usual, um, you know, I go back to this uh, initial blog post prompt from Paul DiCarlo where you can get a little bit of an idea about uh, the things that they, they've been covering off. Uh, across the community from uh, an IoT perspective. There's been some absolutely fantastic content uh, and there's still more to come. So we're currently coming up to the end of this week, which is beginners, students, teachers and makers. There's been some phenomenal content, which I'll call out one or two items now. Um, but now we're moving into this week of microcontrollers and embedded hardware. So really, if you are looking to understand a little bit more about the, the fantastic world of IoT, um, go and follow Paul um, there and, and some of the other guys from the cloud advocacy team on the IoT side. Uh, st stick around, stay tuned, see what uh, gets released throughout this week because there's been some fantastic content, like I say, uh, and it's going to gonna be around, you know, like, like we can see, for the next two weeks to the end of uh, July as part of this July OT series. So, like I say, some of the content that we've seen um, this week um, Jim posted out this fantastic um, set of resources, which is essentially uh, a beginner's guide to IoT, which forms this uh, GitHub repo. And it's really, it's like, like, like you can see here, it's a curriculum of uh, a 12 week, 24 lesson uh, set of learning modules and, and courses with questions and answers before and during and after each session. And it kind of takes you through the, the really, you know, Base, well, the basics and the beginnings of how you understand what IoT is. Uh, and you can see that it's got some fantastic content in there. And I am, I think I did spot that uh, Jen said that this was trending on GitHub uh, the other day. So, you know, it's become really popular, which is great to see. Um, you know, for those that have been following me, I've been on my own IoT journey for the last uh, seven or eight months. And I can't stress enough how fun and exciting it is, you know, for, for the, the amount of possibilities that you can build in terms of solutions with this great tech and uh, and great initiative. So, yep, just wanted to call that out there. You can see that uh, if you browse on over to the Microsoft GitHub repo and search for IoT for beginners, you will find this. So get involved. Have a little look at that if you're interested. Okay, it's so moving on. Uh, Chris Reddington uh, has got another one of his episodes coming out uh, later today with the awesome Pete Gallagher. So stick around for that. That's going to be an interesting watch, no doubt. Uh, again, related to the IoT theme. I know both Chris uh, Chris is involved in the world of IoT, but um, as we know, Pete is there as well. So looking forward to seeing what that uh, video is going to be all about. I'm sure it's going to be awesome as it always is. So uh, go and give Chris a follow and, and stay stick around, stay tuned and give that a, a watch if you can. So just, <clears throat> just dipping into some of the big announcements from this week and, and Microsoft Inspire, just calling these out, not going to delve into them too quickly, but Christian shared this video that was effectively um, part of the Inspire launch. And I'm going to mute that because it's very loud. So yeah, part of the Inspire launch um, of... Uh, Windows 365, which is a cloud PC, essentially, um, I suppose you could say it's in the the, the AVD um, family of product sets, but this time it's uh, a licensed subscription type base model in terms of a cloud PC. Uh, there are some differences between Windows 365 and AVD, obviously. So 
Um, I'll point to some resources in a second now, but um, great announcement this week. And it's, um, you know, taken the socials by storm a little bit from what I've seen. So um, the WBD slash AVD community has um, released some more information with some of the great guys and gals in that community kind of chipping in and pitching in with some of those news around news around um, cloud PC. So go and give them a follow and check out the latest newsletter where um, Neil has put some great links to some of the news around Windows 365. Um, some of the comparisons between 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop, you know, in terms of, you, you can see there, there's a few um, different callouts there in terms of the licensing model, the management capabilities, the scaling capabilities, uh, and, you know, roughly when would one thing be more beneficial over another. So I'm sure that's going to be um, a debate to come over the, the, the coming weeks and months, but it's cool to see that Microsoft have really invested in this. Um, and it's going to be an interesting watch to see how this develops over the next uh, few months. So, like I say, um, for some great consolidated information, go and give the, the guys over at WVD Community a follow and jump into their latest newsletter. And you can see they've, they've put some links there to some great content in terms of actually how it's all coming together and how it's working. So that's cool to see. So thanks for that. Um, in other news from the community, uh, Thomas Maurer has just put this um, recent uh, blog article out, really just highlighting this new series that Microsoft have, have kind of launched, this um, Inside Azure for IT program, which essentially is is, is a set of resources and um, video, videos from experts across Microsoft um, really looking at how do we, you know, look at best practices and architect solutions um, in, in the right way with those best practices for scalability, security, monitoring, all of that good stuff in mind. So the series has just been launched now and they're focusing on Azure Arc, uh, SAP on Azure, SAP, uh, Azure VM, VMware solutions and Azure Stack HCI. Oh, and Linux, Linux on, on Azure. Oh, and many more. Fair enough. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is going to expand or whatnot, but there's a series of videos here um, that kind of explains, um, you know, what, what you can expect to see in terms of this video series. And it's really about helping, you know, people understand all those latest tools that you can use within Azure and what the capabilities are. And of course, from product teams, just to just, just to get familiar with that insider type knowledge of, you know, how do we deploy these things in a best practice kind of manner. Uh, there's an associated um, website here on, on, on the, well, on the docs website, essentially, uh, really just talking about what this series is all about. So, Go and have a watch of that. There's some great information. I've managed to watch a few of the videos on there, and it really just delves into, you know, how how do you kind of do these things in that kind of best practice manner and, you know, with some examples and things like that. So you can see we've got those areas that I called out there, SAP, VMware Solutions. Um, there's Server on Azure, so obviously talking around things like Auto Manage and Windows Admin Center. Um, some videos around Linux and, of course, Azure Arc um, and uh, Stack HDI. So it's a great set of resources. Like I say, these videos, they they kind of range in, in length, but, um, you know, there's a fair few there to get through just to kind of pique your interest and really understand a little bit more about these areas. So it's a great call out there. Thanks to Thomas for sharing that out with the community earlier this week. Okay. Um Big shout out to Sarah Lean, aka Tacky Lass. Um, an amazing achievement. She's approaching her hundredth weekly video. So um Sarah was one of the inspirations for me to get started doing these kinds of videos. Um, you know, I'd seen what she was up to and what she was doing. And like like I say, um, you know, just sticking with the level of commitment and consistency is you know, is, is is no mean feat. You know, it's 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 um it's really a committed exercise that you kind of need to get yourselves into and that's why I started because having that regular recurrence and regular cadence but it's just fantastic to see now how how much share has done over the last um 18 months two years with her own journey in that regard so huge shout out and congratulations if you're not following Sarah then you know you, you should be um go and uh, give her a subscribe on a YouTube channel look out for that hundredth um video episode so congratulations Sarah and really looking forward to seeing that uh, that huge milestone that you hit in there with that video series. So well done. And um, yeah, congratulations. So take a look out for that one. 
Okay, just staying in theme. Um, I had a fantastic catch up with May the other day, so look out for that coming out on in conversation with uh, my video series in um, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, one thing I didn't call out that I knew that we should have done is that May's been incredibly creative as she always is with with the work that she puts out. Um, she's de de developed these stickers and these sticker series that you can download and, and get printed off and whatnot, but it's all um, covering the Power Platform. So I thought it was a really cool, neat, creative idea. Just going to give that a quick shout out there. So if you're interested in things like that, go and uh, May has given a link there to uh, where you can download that sticker series from. Um, go and give her a follow, jump on it, and get them printed out. So they're really cool little uh, little thing there that May has put together. So um, just wanted to call that out because I know I missed that off the video series the other the other day with May. So uh, thanks for that, May. Awesome as always. Azure Thames Valley. So okay, yeah, Chris Reddington, my good friend uh, and fellow Welshie, is one of the co-organizers of Azure Thames Valley, and he's actually giving a talk at their next event, um, which is on the twentieth of July. So in uh, four days' time from the recording of this video, uh, he's going to be talking about how GitHub can help planning, building, and deploying a podcast blog site. So I've seen um, um, a few talks around this area that Chris has gone on to talk about how he's done his blog and podcast site, and it's truly kind of um, really interesting and, and really great to see how Chris has put that together and how he explains how it all comes together. So if you are interested in this kind of thing, so in other words, deploying um, your own website, website or podcast, or whatever it may be, from GitHub using GitHub Actions and static um, page and uh, static content uh, web publishing essentially. Uh, go and give that a follow because that'll be uh, some great information for you. And obviously, give the the guys at the Azure Terms Value User Group a bit of support by uh, by attending their sessions. Moving on, um, yeah, I, this caught my eye the other day, and and really, I, I had a quick look through it, and there's some fantastic um, information there and and help really and pointers if you are looking to start your own kind of YouTube video series or record your your first YouTube video. Um, Gwen and Rishab go into a bit of detail. So Gwen has put this seven day YouTube starter kit up on her GitHub repo, um, and essentially it gives you you know a series of tasks and a series of pointers with how can you actually start to develop your first uh youtube video so it's a great piece of content and and really some practical uh, guidance there on how you can put these kinds of things together you know with how do you sit down how much time should you spend you know kind of researching your topic area maybe looking at uh, writing that script then sitting down and recording how much time should you spend on 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 editing you know if you don't know uh Gwen and Richard, they're you know hugely popular in the cloud community. They've done some fantastic content across YouTube, so they've got some great experience there. And and this is their way of sharing that back out to the community if you are looking to get started. Because um, yeah, there are some you know learnings that you have to go through to do these kinds of things. But um, yeah, huge thanks to Gwen and of course Richard for putting that out there and uh, helping us all kind of um, take that step. So go and give that a little look see. And finally, on the community call, I've just uh, given a quick shout out to this initiative from Izzy. Uh, she put this out um, a month or so ago now, I think, where, you know, if you're working from home, we've all done some development around our um, home office space and our backgrounds and, you know, our computer setups and things like that. And there's been some fantastic uh, pictures and content going across YouTube over the last year during this um, COVID lockdown period. So Izzy put together this kind of idea in terms of um, a community award thing where submit your pictures of your office setup. They're going to be judged. There's a few community judges and they've actually got some, you know, some fantastic prizes. You can see there that, um, you know, we've got some vouchers that are going to be given away from uh, ProCloud and Script Runner. So uh, go and give Izzy a follow. Join in. If you've got some pictures or you want to take some pictures, get them uploaded and submitted because, you know, there truly are some fantastic and inspirational home office setups there. And this was a great little idea um, with kind of um, putting that on a pedestal. So thanks to Izzy and the, the, the team on that one. Uh, go and get involved. Okie dokie. So that was the community call out. What I'm going to do now is quickly go into um, a bit around the, the Welsh Azure user group and then just talk to you around the other bits and pieces I've been up to this week before we get into the 
the news around Inspire. So I'll keep keep this as uh, concise as possible. Um, so yeah, let's jump on over. Let's talk about the Welsh Azure Use Group because we've had some fantastic news this week. So yes, first up in terms of the Welsh Azure User Group, huge shout out to NetApp and Kirk Ryan for becoming our third community sponsor. So together with Servant and Admiral, NetApp have um, approached us to sponsor the user group, which means, you know, we can actually develop the user group, take it a little bit further in terms of, um, you know, spot prizes for quizzes, for the when we get back to the face-to-face -face meetups, you know, getting um, various resources in place to, to hold those user groups. Hugely appreciated. Big shout out to Kirk and, of course, NetApp for sponsoring the group. So, uh, like I say, that was announced last night. We had our July event launched last night. Um, we'll get into that in a second. But, I mean, you know, if, if you do not follow the Welsh Azure user group, go and give us a follow on Twitter at Welsh Azure. You can see last night we had some great interactions. So Ross um, was the winner of the quiz um, with Sebastian coming in second place. And we always give a first and second place prize. Or I say always. More often than not, we give a first and second place, place prize. You can see we had the amazing Tim Warner on. Um, he came to talk to us about Azure networking. Uh, we had Ryan Mangan on doing a lightning talk, talking to us around uh, MSI App Attach. Um, we had a sheesh, sh uh, yeah, we had a sheesh on uh, talking around how do you um, look at uh, Azure web apps and how do you troubleshoot them if there's any performance issues or performance degradation. Uh, she's took took us through some great hints and tips of how you can actually use the portal to dig into that information and do some troubleshooting. So um, that's great to see. And then the the, the other the, the final lightning talk was from Mike Martin. So uh, Mike, uh, I did a YouTube video on my in conversation with Sue's that will be coming out uh, next week, I think, or the week after. Um, but Mike was on the user group giving us a talk around Azure Security Center. So he's such a great character and great person to really explain and teach us things um, on, on that side of the fence. So, yeah, he was on giving us that lightning talk. And it was great, fun interaction from the, the crowd. We had a great take up again. Hugely, uh, you know, huge thanks to everybody that attended last night. Uh, and of course, you know, huge thanks to those speakers that came and actually spent the time to take us through a few of those learnings that they've been through. Um, if you did miss it, the recording is available on this YouTube channel. It got uploaded last night. So go and give that a watch. All the talks are timestamped so you can click to the, the talk that may be of interest to you. But I, you know, I, I thoroughly recommend it. All the four talks that we had last night were superb uh, with some great information. I certainly learned a lot from each of those talks in, in on their own. So Go and give that a follow um, where you can see on the YouTube, if you look for the Welsh Use Group playlist, you can see it's got all of our uh, previous virtual meetups, which I think we're up to about um, number 10 or 11 now, which is pretty cool. So I know we did skip a few we were doing every two months to begin, but then we switched to every month from about uh, November, December time. So, yeah, there we go. And to call out, our next user group session will be on the 11th of August. So we're switching to a Wednesday now because there are a few members of the team couldn't make the um, the Thursday session. So we've switched to Wednesday. We'll see how that goes. But next month, so 11th of August, 6.30 p.m. BST, we've got talks from Servant. They're going to kick us off uh, with a, a great talk around the um, University of Glasgow and the use case that they went in and did their AVD deployment. Um, so that's going to be cool. We've got some of the um, Stafford servant coming on to give that talk. So looking forward to that. Uh, we've got Sasha coming on to talk to us around, you know, securing our enterprise with Sentinel. Uh, and then Ricardo coming on to talk to us a little bit around um, Azure Reader's Cache. So uh, that looks to be another great session. So looking forward to that. If you can join us, go on RSVP and follow us on Twitter for more information. Okay, and without further ado, I'm going to jump straight on over to what I've got going on or had going on this week in my, um, I call this section Johnny Chips on the side, just to, just to show some of the other bits and pieces that I've got going on. And hopefully you can join in and um, obviously show some support on that. And that would be awesome. Let's go over to the desktop.
So clearly one of the things I need to do is work out which buttons to press on the Stream Deck so that I don't keep putting that little splash screen up. But um, anyway, we're back at the desktop now. Johnny Ship's on the side. So first up today, uh, really looking forward to this. But um, the Patch and Switch show is uh, on a cadence of uh, every two weeks. In between, uh, Gerard Shockley and Pierre Roman give a testing and production podcast. So they jump on, they take over the Patch and Switch Twitch TV channel and talk around various bits and pieces so they've um you know i'm, I'm honored that they've invited me on as a guest tonight so really looking forward to that um you know excited both gerard and pierre are, are great people in microsoft they're doing some fantastic work and you know if you don't follow the patch and switch uh, twitch tv channel you should you know every friday obviously i'm based in the uk so every friday at 5 p.m for about an hour um you know it's usually like i say it's usually joey snow um and um why why and rick yep yeah. well why why is my mind gone blank i have no idea but yeah it's usually joey and rick that are um on the patch and switch uh twitch tv stream uh but like i say in between they have the um testing and production podcast with gerard and pierre so tonight five o'clock PM BST. You can see there the times across the uh, the various time regions. Come on and join us, and we'll uh, we'll, well, we'll have a bit of fun. Yeah, like I say, really looking forward to that. So, in other news, um, last week my guest on in conversation with was Mr. Michael Levan, and that was a fantastic chat. Uh, one of the key points that he pulled out in that conversation was. Uh, be so good that they can't ignore you. And he gave some great hints, tips, advice on upskilling, your career path, things like that. Um, you know, obviously, huge thanks to Michael for giving that session. If you haven't seen it, it's there on the YouTube channel to go and uh, rewatch it. Uh, but obviously, with it being Friday, we've got another episode being launched tonight. It'll be live streamed from 6.30 p.m. Uh, BST over on the Azurish Live Twitch TV stream. And tonight is with James Cook. So we talk all around sort of James's career path, you know, how he got into IT, what the route into IT looked like for James, you know, how he got up to his current position where he's working at the moment. So we talk around, you know, various bits and pieces from DevSecOps, like I say, James's career path. Uh, James has set up this uh, as your community roundtable podcast. We talk a little bit around that and, you know, how that's going. So, yeah, looking forward to that one being streamed out tonight on the Azurish Live Twitch TV stream. If you can join us, join the chat, things like that, that would be awesome. Um, so, yeah, look out for that one later on. And thanks to James for giving up his time for that session as well. Uh, so, like I say, I've had this in conversation with video series going on now for, for coming up to kind of six and a half, nearly seven months now. Uh, I think I've spoken with around about 30 guests now and I've got um got all of the videos listed on 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 the on my website johnnychips.com uh through this in conversation with link um if you do want to be a guest on the show please do fill in this call for speakers or drop me a dm on twitter or whatever love to have you on to talk about something but you can see there I've got all the previous videos so there's some absolutely amazing people um in the community that have taken the time to come and speak to me so if you want to go and have a little peruse they are in the playlist on this youtube channel or you can click on that link and you know have a little search and and find uh the various episode um that may be of interest to you so yeah huge shout out to all the guests that i've had so far on that series it's been uh you know really appreciated um, and just sticking with the theme of in conversation with, I did have a catch up with May as I alluded to earlier. So stay tuned. That one will be released in the next uh, two or three weeks, and that was a really fun chat around the uh, the power platform and power suite. So really talking about May's journey there. So stay tuned for that. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, probably next week or the week after. But that was cool to see. Uh, other news: I had my um, getting started with bicep book uh, that was released from uh, Freak Burson um i think it actually got released last this week yeah i think it got actually released on amazon so i had that favorited ordered it the other day when it got released got delivered late last night so just wanted to shout that on just at, at first glance just a quick flick through the book it looks massively comprehensive and really well written so thanks for that freak i'm really looking forward to getting started um you know digging into the details so to speak of bicep i've done a little bit of um playing and testing with bicep to now but mainly i've been using terraform personally within work and things like that so 
looking forward to expanding my knowledge with bicep and, and getting stuck in to see what um what can be done and, and you know do i make the shift to do certain things with bicep so if you uh if you're interested go and give that a search on on amazon so uh getting started with bicep by freak person but um cool and finally, um, one of my blog posts, I'm digging into the world of Azure AI, so I'm working through all the various learning materials. One of the things I looked at this week was the Language Understanding um, Intelligence Service. So uh, I created my first Lewis app. Um, I did a blog post. If you want to go and have a little look at that blog post, it kind of talks you through how I went about creating that first language understanding application, how I set up a service in Azure, um, you know, actually what did I configure, how did I train uh, a model how did i you know you know create some intents uh and obviously you know how do i work with those intents and create entities it's all in there in that blog article so hopefully it makes a little bit of sense if you want to follow through and there's some links to some of the fantastic learn material as well so that's been me for this week Press the lights. i've also got to stop talking when i do that transition because it cuts my mic off so I'm just saying press the right button this time so Okay, we are coming to the last section of the show, and as the title of this video is Inspire, we're going to talk about a little bit around some of the announcements of Inspire, which there have been a lot, so I'm not int intending to spend too long on this section, but just to give you some, uh, some bit of an idea. So let's jump back over to the desktop. So yeah, Inspire this week. So it was uh, sort of a two slash three day event, depending on where what time zone you were in. Um, really, it's a partner event. So really, some news for partners to kind of build solutions and products and offerings, things like that. Just Inspire this different way of working. So as always with Microsoft events, normally in or around the the start of the event, we get um, this book of news released. And you know, you, if you just go and do a search for Microsoft Inspire 2021 book of news you'll get a link to this, which is really a nice consolidated um, glossary of all the announcements from um, you know, this particular event, which is Inspire this week. Uh, I'm going to dig into a little bit the Azure announcements, but you can see we've had some announcements across business apps, uh, Microsoft 365, just calling out that Cloud PC, one that um, I mentioned earlier with um, the WVD, AVD community and, and Christian Brinkoff that... Um, Gave some announcements across Twitter this week. Um, yeah, some sustainability and Microsoft Marketplace announcements as well. But for this purposes of this video and Johnny Chips Weekly, I'm centered mainly around Azure. So we'll just quickly take a look at some of these announcements. So in the app dev space, we've got um, API management integration with Event Grid is, has gone into preview. So really speaking, any of those um you know when, whenever you're using api management uh you can actually configure api management to publish events into event grid now and do some further action whether whatever that may be so you can see that so when a when a new user or a subscription is created using api management resource um you know it can be kind of sent to event grid and um you know event grid then can then be used to trigger or publish or whatever you like you know that event onto um a, a destination source so that's interesting to see. Um, and sticking with the event grid theme, again, they, they've integrated that in terms of uh, AKS. So there's an event source for event grid as now available with AKS with some uh, information around how that might be able to be used. Um, like I say, I'm not going to dig into these in too much detail, but smart defaults for Azure Kubernetes service uh, simplify, and, uh, simplify and expedite configuration. In the data space, we've got a um, new partner center uh, in, in, in uh, Azure Synapse, so connecting customers to partner solutions. So again, with Inspire being a partner conference, this is mainly shifted around. If you are a partner and you've got access to that partner center, then um, there's various partner solutions now in the Azure Synapse space that have been announced, and you can link to them in the, in the, in the partner center. Uh, Azure Hybrid and Multi Cloud. So there's been a number of announcements. I pointed out those video that video series earlier on uh, that Thomas Maurer kind of indicated towards. Um, but now we've got new partners in the Azure Stack HCI uh, space. They're being offered. There's some more partner programs. You know, getting onto those kind of programs and marketing bits and pieces to really start building up propositions and solutions around Azure Stack HCI. Um, so a little bit about that there. So cool to see 
Um, and there's, well, there's also some, uh, well, yeah, I think we'll click on this one first. So uh, manage Arc enabled SQL Server with Lightag. So they've incorporated that ability to manage the SQL Server environment at a little bit of a deeper level with, um, with Lighthouse. And there have been some more uh, partner advanced specializations released. And again, any of these links you can click on. There's a bit more of a learning link in this article here. Um, so click on that one. So let's just see what we've got in terms of the advanced specializations. You can see that, um, you know, if you are a partner, then typically you would work towards um, you know, getting one of these advanced specializations as a partner, there's certain benefits and perks, I guess, in terms of working with Microsoft uh, with some form of, of an advanced specialization. And you can see there, I'm not sure which, so I don't know if they've renamed, but um, we've got these four now, essentially app development, hybrid cloud and infrastructure. And you can see what that covers. I think that is one of the new ones there. Cloud migration and data analytics and AI. So, you know, like I say, if you've got solutions as a partner or you're working towards some solutions in terms of fitting into one of these spaces, you can work towards uh, some of these advanced specializations. So it's great to see there have been uh, a couple more announced at Inspire this week. Uh, Azure Infra per user access pricing option for Azure Virtual Des Desktop Expands remote, remote App Streaming. So there have been a huge number of announcements around ABD and Cloud PC. Um, I've, I've read a bit of it, but I think it's probably fair to say there's a bit more reading to be done to understand really the um, the key areas of when would you go Cloud PC over something like you know deploying ABD. <clears throat> and clearly they've introduced this per user access pricing option. Um, I've not read into that in any great detail. I mean, I can click on the link to see if it gives us, but, you know, clearly they've got that subscription model with Cloud PC. Now they've introduced a per user license for AVD. Just reading out, it sounds like there's a lot of overlap there in terms of those options from a commercial perspective, but, you know, there, there are clearly going to be um, differences in terms of when you would do one over another or, or vice versa. So, like I say, clearly there's a bit more reading to be done to understand those models a bit more. <laughs> and I'm sure there will be a lot of talk over the coming weeks and months about that in the community as well. So look forward to understanding that a little bit better. Uh, and finally, I'm, 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 the final one for this uh, Inspire piece is expanded programs and updates support cloud migration and modernization. So... So Microsoft is expanding programs and extending security updates to streamline and simplify cloud migration and modernization. So they include the AMP program, so the Azure migration and modernization. So they've included that uh, extra M. It was previously called the Azure migration. So they've migration and modernization program now. So covers a wider breadth of migration and modernization offerings across apps, infrastructure, and data, including the support for Azure Arc. So that's cool to see that this is the direction that they're expecting, Microsoft are expecting partners to take up in that space a lot more, is that hybrid Azure Arc space, which is absolutely something that I've looked at, played with, deployed to a point. Um, so yeah, cool to see that uh, Microsoft are bringing up those um, specializations in those areas. And also, that we've got this Azure Migrate app containerization. So it now supports containerized apps uh, to the Azure app service. So the web app for containers tool. Um, so it helps to modernize existing ASP.NET and Java web apps by packaging them into containers and deploying the containerized app to Azure Kubernetes or Azure app service for containers. So cool to see. Um, like I say, I'm not going to dwell on those announcements anymore for Inspire, but um, if you're interested, go and Google for the book of news and take a look at it. And, and by way of other announcements for this week, um, there, there have been, uh, again, a plethora of announcements from Microsoft in terms of uh, what's gone on this week. I think it was up into the 20s, if not 30. So you can see that there's been a, a fair amount of updates going on. There's been a fair amount of uh, public preview support um, coming out for various uh, services. Um, I'm not going to dig into these in any great detail, but you can see things I just called out there from Inspire API Management and Event Grid Integration are there in public preview. Um, there, there's lots more. Like I say, um, for the sake of time on this video this week, I'm going to um, just quickly scroll down that but uh, and see if you can um, spot any more. But of course, things like call recording is in public preview. I thought that was actually uh, out last week. I remember that one 
coming out because I remember that caught my eye. So it's interesting to see why that's been called out again on the, this this week's set of uh, uh, announcements. Um, so yeah, like I say, there's been. If I click to the next page, we're still. You know, these announcements came out a couple of days ago, so you can see there's that event grade integration with AKS. Uh, we've got Purview product glossary and so on and so forth. So there's, I'm just scanning down now. This is my first look at these announcements of this week, just to see if there's anything that does catch my eye. Azure Sphere is a common one. There's always going to be updates to Azure Sphere. Um, and yeah, we're back at last week now. So this is, you know, into, into last week's announcement. So yeah, there's been a good 20 to 30 announcements this week, as well as obviously, you know, the, those other announcements from, um, from Microsoft Inspire. So yeah, like I say, go and check that out. Go and get the book of news. Have a read. There's always lots to consume and lots to, to, to kind of dig into. But um, we'll call it there for this week. So, yeah, thanks again to everybody that's tuned in to watch this video. It really is appreciated. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, like I say, this is episode 29 now of Johnny Chips Weekly. Really enjoy doing these videos once a week. It gives me a good opportunity to kind of review uh, at, a, at a high level all the things that I've been kind of looking at and dipping into and learning about for the for the week in, in Azure and the cloud space, uh, as well as call out any, any cool things that I see others up to in the community. So huge shout out to everybody in the community doing all the fantastic work that they're doing. Keep keep it up um you know uh like i say i think it's it's fair to say there's 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 a lot there's a lot of things going on constantly uh i think you've got to pick your moments you've got to pick the things that you look into um because it, it is overwhelming there's so much information flying around at the moment so many fantastic user groups video series there's there's a lot but equally it does come to the point now where you know summer's approaching we're allowed back out and about you know kids activities and general way of life uh, have all started back up over the last uh, month or so and of course restrictions are now being lifted certainly in England and Wales where I am um, you know closely behind no doubt so yeah we're all getting back out and about a bit more so time is becoming um, that precious element back again for us so anyway hope you've enjoyed this video take care of yourselves have a fantastic weekend um, wherever you are in the world thanks for watching uh, if you do like it give it a like subscribe to my channel it would be appreciated but until next time uh, i've been john lunn and look forward to speaking to you all soon